a seat to be had, you know what I mean? Fully kind of, I mean, I know the capacity is not massive, obviously, with it being an indoor thing, but, you know, f- full of people, you know, great games, you know, fantastic kind of competitive matches. Um, yeah, but I, I, I genuinely don't know why Medway <laughs> is, um, is a hotbed of wheelchair rugby well, league. If anyone can help of... me out good teams down there haven't you as well um, but why have why have we got good teams down there that, that, so that's the question isn't it why are there good wheelchair yeah. rugby league teams down there unconnected to anything else yeah I, I'm, I'm genuinely interested because it's like because we've just talked about how how it, it'll be weird having this cornwall un, unconnected team but you know unconnected teams <laughs> unconnected kind of pockets of of the sport can can thrive it's just i just don't know how yeah, well, and France being the best team in the world, and like when when we, I'd I'd never sat and watched a full wheelchair rugby league game before this year. I'd watched um, like highlights of games uh, on on YouTube channels and things like that, but I'd never sat or watched you know twenty minutes of a game or something. I'd never sat and watched a full eighty minutes until this year, and now I've, I've watched several. Um, and one thing I, that hadn't struck me is size matters in in wheelchair rugby league because the French side had two or three really big guys and I kind of thought, well, is it is it really going to matter? But that that sort of wingspan to kind of reach out and grab people's tags is important. Also, they must get extra pace through their wheels when they push them down with their longer levers you'd think they get more power per push um say for, for, so it, so england need a couple of taller blokes i think or women um with longer arms yeah <laughs> yeah to, to compete with his french side that 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 was my takeaway because skills wise you know we were we were there skills wise um physic like in terms of fitness we were there but it was just that extra physicality that they had where they could brush us aside a little bit and we were scrambling a bit at times and gave away a lot of silly penalties and stuff but yeah that's my final thought anyway is that we need to probably be thinking about a a wheelchair um player of the year next year in our in our wider world of rugby league awards but um yeah i would concur with that definitely any any closing thoughts from from yourselves anything from you alan um just what well, another weird year, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I, I, I must admit, I didn't think we'd be still talking about using the c word so much at this time of the, of the year, but but we are. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just been great that kind of a degree of normality has returned to actually being able to go to games, and you know, it, it feels like that's been a very welcome thing this year um but yeah it's it, it's still it's still a, a remarkably odd uh 12 months i would say so. yeah it, it, it might have felt welcome for you what having to watch that wigan team in person was even worse than watching <laughs> on tv trust me <laughs> what about no, you that... sarah <laughs> yeah i mean it was it was such an excitement going to um you know going to a game for the first time and then that's when we kind of stopped playing really <laughs> when we had a crowd um and by the end i you know we were counting down the minutes for the last few matches just wanting it to end um so you know i really it it yeah it was a strange feeling i think after the fear of feeling like you know was life ever going to return to normal what what were we going to be able to watch matches again and all the rest of it to suddenly then not actually wanting to be watching the matches um but you know, roll on next season; it'll all be better, won't it? And of course, but, you know, we had the biggest storyline of 2021 as well uh, happening in Hull: the the big name transfer, Joshua moving clubs. Yeah. And potentially yeah, thinking about being a referee, so big moves in in Hull. Well, this is a yeah, attracted national press and all sorts. <laughs> well, we've got an international audience, Sarah. Sorry, an international, yeah, press. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I don't think that they listen, but just a massive, massive shout out to the guys at Beverly. They are really good, done great things, really brought him on a lot. 
Excellent stuff. That's great to hear. And that's a really nice note, I think, for us to, to close 2021 on. We want to thank everyone who voted in the awards, um, everyone who's contributed throughout the year as well. Um, and uh, and we hope that you'll uh, you'll be around to enjoy us again next year um, on another run around the, the world of rugby league. But yeah, thanks to all you guys for listening. Please make sure you click retweet on your on the tweets, hit click share on Facebook posts, make sure this gets out to a big audience so that we can wind up anyone with uh with our hatred of, of certain choices and uh, <laughs> cheer some people up maybe with some of our other choices that we made and, and the award winners. But um I suppose the last congratulations should go to all of the award winners, uh including our uh Listeners, listener of the year, Fat Boy Rob. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations, everybody. Goodbye. Happy Christmas. Oh, and a happy new year. <laughs>